Good morning. Uh, my name is Elias Elias or Elias Elias, whatever you're comfortable with. You know, I've been at NDSU since 1990 uh, as a Durham wheat breeder. Today, I'm going to talk to you about some of the Durham varieties that you can probably see them here. You don't see much. They are still in the green stage. I normally come to uh, Williston area and most of you probably know me. I enjoy doing that, but uh, because of the COVID-19, this year we're going to have to do this and hopefully you can get something out of this uh, video. Uh, what I like to do is to talk about the Durham varieties, the ones that they are the predominant ones, the ones that they're grown in North Dakota on majority of the acres. And then also I will talk about some of the newer varieties. Last year, for example, the variety Joppa that we, re we released in 2013 was grown on 30% of the acreage in North Dakota. When you look at Joppa, based on the last three years, average across the state will yield about 63 bushels an acre. It's a very high yielding variety, but in the Williston area, it will yield less because of the environment. So it's going to get about maybe 43 bushels uh, an acre in, in the Williston area. After that, we have the variety Divide, which we released in 2005. That was, that, that was or this is, last year was grown on about maybe 22% of the acreage in North Dakota. It's not as high yielding as, as Joppa, but has a uh, very, uh, very good yield potential plus some tolerance to scab and that's why most of the producers uh, they like it. After that uh, there is the variety Al Cabo which we released in 2005. Last year was grown on about 8% uh, of the acreage in North Dakota. Uh, across the state it yields less than uh, Joppa but in the Williston area it still has very high yield potential. It's almost as good as, as Joppa. The variety after that is uh, Carpio. Carpio we released in 2012. Last year was grown on about 6% of the acreage in North Dakota. It has a good yield potential across the state, but in the Williston area, it is less than the variety Joppa or Carpio. The latest two varieties that we released in 2017, that is ND Grano and ND Reveland. They both have good yield potential, especially ND Reveland. And the Riveland across the state, is the, it out yields all the varieties, including Joppa, maybe by about 2% to 4%, depends on the variety. In the Williston area and the Riveland, it has similar yield, maybe half a percent higher than Joppa, uh, and the same thing, maybe half a percent over, over uh, Al Cabo. Uh, now, this is the yield potential of these. When we look at the test weight, all the varieties, more or less, they have the similar test weight, especially in the Williston area, maybe they average about 61 uh, pounds per bushel. The highest test weight, you're gonna find it in Al Cabo. It's about maybe half a pound uh, heavier. Kernel size, the largest kernel is ND Riveland, is the new one. Uh, maybe about a gram or two for a thousand kernel weight. Otherwise, all of them, they are, they are characterized by large kernels which they have about 40 grams per thousand kernel weight. Height-wise, they're all about 22 inches in height in the Williston area, uh, with the exception of Al Cabo. Al Cabo maybe is a couple inches shorter than the rest of them, and that's why it's well known for its uh, straw strength. Maturity-wise, or days to heading, they're all on the medium size. There is not much difference. It's about 63 days from planting to heading. For quality, the most important one is protein. Uh, as we all know, we need about 13.5% protein to make good pasta. And if you look at all the varieties, you will see all of them, they have that 13.5% or higher. The highest protein content, you're gonna find it in the variety and the Riveland, even though it has a very high uh, yield. Sim similar, ND Grano will have very, very high protein content. Like I said, they're all, more than 13.5 percent with the exception of uh, Joppa. Joppa on average maybe will have about half to one percent less in protein content than the other varieties. Now it's good to have protein. What about the quality? Uh, we need the quality to make the good pasta. We can measure quality by mixograph score from one to 
eight, eight being poor, eight, uh, I mean, uh, one being poor and eight being uh, strong, you will see that Carpio, the variety Carpio, has almost eight. It's a perfect when it comes to gluten strength. Followed by Andy Rivland and Joppa. They both have about seven, 7.3, 7 7.2. And Divide also has about 72. And the remaining, they are about maybe 6.8 or 6.9. So all of them, they have very good uh, gluten, str gluten strength. Other way to measure it is by gluten index from 1 to 100. 1 being very poor, 100 being very good. If you look at Carpio, it has about 92. Uh, Andy Rivland about 90. Joppa is about 90. Divide Al Cabo, they are a little bit lower. Maybe they are like 80. But if you compare this to the very old varieties, the Montreal that it was very popular at one time, Montreal had a, has a gluten index about 25. So you can see the improvement in the gluten uh, index when, when we talk about uh, quality. Disease-wise, the most important disease is Fusarium head blight. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the variety divide was uh, grown on large acreages because people like, like because of the tolerance in the scab. Now, Andy Rivland has the lowest disease severity compared to all the varieties, followed by divide. Uh, the dawn levels, it's lower, but the lowest dawn level, you're going to find it in Joppa. So we have varieties now that have some kind of tolerance to the scab. Tan spot, septoria, they're all the same. They're all in the medium type, medium, medium resistant or medium susceptible. So there is no advantage or disadvantages in any of them. They're all resistant to the rust, so we don't have problems with the rust also. The latest thing is cadmium. Cadmium is a heavy metal that you can find it in the soil. Uh, it happened that it, the Durham likes to absorb cadmium. And we don't want cadmium in our pasta because I, I guess it causes cancer or all these other things. So we don't want it. The international export market, they put limitation that you cannot have more than 200 parts per billion uh, cadmium levels in, in Durham. They will not purchase it from you. So if you look at all our varieties, you'll see they are between 150 to 200, depends on where you grow these. So we are right on the edge of that. But the two varieties that we released in 2017, Andy Grano and Andy Rivland, we were able to put a gene in there to stop the absorption of, of cadmium or, or, or will have lower absorption. So if you look at the Andy Rivland and Andy Grano, they will have about 40 parts per billion. So we are way far away from the 200. So, so in that way, we can at least protect our international export market. And also we provide a high quality durum for the pasta industry. Obviously we don't want any cadmium in, in uh, our pasta. I think that's all what I have for you guys. So I hope this was uh, beneficial for you so you can make decisions and what to put on your farm and wh whatever you do, I wish you good luck with, the, with your crop. Thank you.